Welcome again to the USCA AC Nationals Croquet Tournament, April 2021, held at the Sarasota County Croquet Club in Venice, Florida. Your tournament director, assisted by his wife Eileen and Jeff Sue, and the president of the Sarasota County Croquet Club is Hans Peterson, who functions as tournament manager as well. Your videographer is Paul Newbecker. This is block play featuring Sharif Abdul Wahab and Blake Fields. Where do I start? Sharif has been playing croquet forever. He has five singles national championships and 14 doubles championships, including <laughs> 2012 through 2019 in golf croquet with four different partners in 2018 when he was 11 or 12, Blake Fields. Sharif won his first national championship, doubles in golf croquet, in 1999 with Mick Mijas. He's been on multiple international teams and his contributions to croquet are too numerous to count. He's being inducted into the Hall of Fame this winter. Blake Fields turned 15 in the middle of October 2021. So he was 14 when this tournament was videoed. He has that one national championship. He has five years of AC grades on the Beauty Doc website. So he's been playing AC since he was nine years old and golf croquet since he was about six, I think. Blake is responding to a super shot with a duffer ties in second turn. It's usually used when the first ball goes to the east boundary, but it is analogous to a response that Chris Clark talks about where you place this ball a little bit north and east of hoop five as a Tice in response to a super shot. I slowed this down to make sure that that ball didn't hit the hoop, moving the brown ball and becoming responsible. Which would give it a lift in sixth turn if it was still there. Blake's fourth turn shot misses the super shot by a coat of paint and gets tied up in the furniture. Other options would have been the shorter shot at his own Tice or a shot at white from the end of a balk, going into corner two if you missed, making it very difficult for Sharif to get going.
He's having trouble getting that rush he wants to hoop one. topic for a sports psychologist. It's interesting how often a spectacular shot is followed by a truly mediocre one. I've used this graphic for clip positions in the past. I'll switch to a horizontal one later in the game. If you feel like it, let me know what you think. We've commented before that long accurate rushes from more than like six, eight feet are what separate the big boys from the rest of us. Looks like Blake is becoming one of the big boys. Blake is from Rancho Mirage and plays at the Mission Hills Country Club, so he's playing a Morford mallet, and he learned the game from Ben Rothman. He uses the same Solomon grip that Ben uses, but otherwise the swing is pretty different. It's way more upright. He casts and never puts the mountain head down the way Ben does. I asked him how that developed, and he said he thought it was because he needed a bigger backswing to generate power when he was little. It's a lot like some of the younger English and New Zealand players like Felix Webby who swing that same way.
And speaking of younger players, when he and Matthew played for the Golf Coquet National Championship a couple of months ago, their combined ages, I think, was less than half the average age of the whole croquet population. He runs a lovely break from here, and ordinarily I would truncate it for sake of brevity, but since this is Blake's first appearance on this channel, we'll show the whole thing. It's tempting to either rush or croquet green to pioneer position at two back from here. But this is probably the safer way to get that done. A little better to keep that Pioneer inside the rectangle. All right, he's going to go fix it. He must have heard me.
looks like a three ducks leave in the game using first colors. Blake gets the first ball to four back and a nice diagonal spread. His rush is better set up for using the peg ball than it is pink at hoop two, which may be why Sharif is picking up white. White's also Sharif's hoop one ball. There's really nothing forcing about a diagonal spread, so a lot of times the choice of which ball to pick up is arbitrary. At this point, Blake doesn't have any triple peels listed on the Pewter grade site. He did do one OTP against Danny, so that means he completed the triple peel maneuver but lost the game. Let's see what he's got here. Here's a shot that most folks wouldn't take. Pink has a pioneer at its hoop. But when you have a golf croquet national championship under your belt, 
It doesn't matter. See that? So good. That's fun. I don't know whether these two have ever tested their critical distances or not, but it sure looks like more than 13 yards. Remember, that's the white ball down in corner four. I haven't had a chance to talk with him about it myself, but I'm told that Shuri feels that he gets better feel doing these croquet shots with one hand like that. One wonders about control a little bit, but he doesn't do it on single ball shots, only in a croquet shot where the setup of the two balls has a larger influence on where the balls go. And he doesn't do it just on small shots around the hoop. He does it here, the granddaddy of split shots. After this, he made two, four, and five without event, picked up the white ball out of corner four, dropped it off in pioneer position at two back, and he's now about to make six and set up his leave. Looks like he's going to do a new standard or a mom standard leave. This leave has a lot more influence over the opponent's choice of lift shots than does a diagonal spread. Sharif's going to wire a ball from his two balls in the boundary down at hoop four, and that makes it marginally easier to get a triple going on time. So he wants Blake to leave the ball at four that he wires there. Blake wants to lift green because, as you can see, it's his back ball. And if he hits, he's going to want to run his triple off of green. So Shreve's going to leave green here, wired from the end of Bebonk by hoop two and not easily rushable to hoop one. And he's going to take brown and wire it at hoop four, hoping that Blake lifts green and leaves brown where he puts it. Looks like green is on the wire of two, which means it doesn't have an open shot into corner four. That can be a problem if the opponent lifts the hoop four ball, misses into corner four, and then you don't happen to make hoop one. Green would then have a lift to balk. So in setting up this leave, that hoop two ball needs to be off the wire a little bit. I've never actually seen this make any difference, but it's one of the million things you can think about if you want to. That was a full roll that took him to his pioneer at three back.
positioning Brown so that it's wired by the hoop from his two balls on the east boundary. He's going to go over to ABOC to make sure that one brown is wired from ABOC by hoop four and that there's no easy double from ABOC at his two balls on the boundary. Blake is shooting at a double, but he had to go so far back on ABOC to get it that the benefit looks marginal. Setting up the shot that very much needs to be practiced to make the mom standard lead work. Send one opponent ball to hoop two while getting a rush on the wired ball to hoop one. That way you're not making hoop one off the P-Lee and it's easier to go back to the P-Lee and position it for the four back peel. And if you don't get the rush you wanted, you have a pretty good setup with opponent balls of hoops one and two. He's not trying to hit this ball. That's for position. If he'd done a scatter, they would have been too far apart to be useful. Even though this is Green's hoop, Blake would still rather play his back ball in hopes of getting something going. No change in clip oh, yeah. position. Kiss people won't show up. But you know what the good news is? You're giving me a consolation pack. <laughs> good news is you have an opportunity to spend more money. Nine dollars. So the P Lee's in about the same place as it was the first time, but now he has a pioneer at hoop one. So the triple's a bit more likely.
and all this. Looks like he wasn't even trying for the rush to hoop two from there. So he's going to use the P Lee to make two, but the triple can still be on time if he has a good hoop four pioneer before he goes to hoop two. He obviously can't use the one-handed technique when any sort of roll is required.
It's an Egyptian thing. Loose hoops are more dangerous than narrow hoops. If pink is rushable, it's no problem, but his gestures suggest that it's not. Coach, you missing a lot of balls? Yeah. I don't think he's going to get a triple. It's going to be delayed. That ball is zooming. one-handed bowls are pissing me off. That's annoying. He's doing it just to be cocky, too. He Seriously. says, I'm just toying around. Oh. Oh. Florida girls. I think that's a mom. Maybe. I'm not sure. That's not the sports news director. Oh, that was going at the peg. That was going at the peg. Milk looks pure and clean. <laughs> Just guessing, but it looks like the triple attempt is history. Sheesh. I don't think Sherry's getting Or maybe it. not. No kids. Mind. The triple's back on if he gets his beer. We just need to pray that he misses it. Second attempt to either Heel or position for four bag. No triple. That one's not rushable either.
I say he still has one back. Instead, I think he's got one back. Mm -hmm. Referee quiz. If that ball had hit his foot, would it have been a fault? It's a fault if it happens before he leaves his stance under control. Very subjective whether he was leaving under control or not. Brown must be at least partially wired from white. But if he puts green on a balk line by shooting at something, it would keep Sharif from making one back off Brown because of the lift. What the hell you do that for? I don't know. The obvious play was to hit these two and just set up a double pioneer and give a rush. Trying to play green is the problem. And I figured if I miss, I still aren't really give a bunch to this situation. That's good. Nice cut. So much for my prediction. It certainly didn't keep him from trying. No change in clip position. From Blake's perspective, those balls are two or three diameters apart, so wider than a standard double, but from 18 yards away, depending on his critical distance, shooting between them would make sense. Now, if his critical distance is 15 or 16 yards, then he probably should have been shooting at that nearer ball, which is probably what he was doing. Oh, yeah. Make sure you play like this against me. I'm going to try and do what I did in the first break against you. Here comes the best shot of Sharif using his one-handed technique for a croquet shot. Woohoo! <laughs> Ma, ma, I stopped breathing for a couple seconds. If you want to get really deep in the weeds on the double target issue, type in double target on the Oxford Croquet website and go to David Appleton's probabilistic analysis of your choices. You better enjoy the numbers, though, if you're going to read that. That's four in a row now. Is that all? I would guess four. 
think it might be two more. So he's going to take the back ball to the pick. I have the on time triple. Oh, I would have had a perfect triple setup. Why does life always have to be a struggle? I'm going to stop for the triple. In the other game, Stephen's about to do an Irish peel of Pinot with a nice escape nice. ball and yellow sitting there. That's what I said, nice. He almost hit that takeoff out. Sharif has a perfect <laughs> Pinot Pioneer, so he's going to gather partner so he can control the leave and speaking of leaves on uh, their website Chris and Jenny Clark have a nice discussion of when a diagonal should be the standard orientation or reversed basically it should be reversed if you're hoop for hoops three four two back three back four back and rover with four back and rover really being optional you can do those either way and since Sharif's white clip is on one back, it will be a standard orientation diagonal spread. I think it's two balls on the Happened earlier, I think. Keep rolling. Wind, wind's coming that way. I figured both these games would be over by now. What? Sure, it's a nice game, actually. That was a while ago. I'd love to peg him out with either ball. Do you think he stops or really goes through? It looks like he's going to go through and then crossfire me on the peg. Box up to cross wire. Oh my god. I can't believe he's beating that one today one handed. I don't know, it's not like all the shots are one-handed. Huh? I don't know if one-handed is a fair characterization. Any shot of significance he takes with two hands. Yeah. All the actual rolls, it's just splits and takeoffs and all that. Yeah, I mean, Technically if he was doing hoop shots one-handed, that would be really oh, I would love it. These people pulling up in their Range Rover.
is it time limit on this game? It's two and a half hours? Uh, yes. Blake Mees to play his back ball. And he's coming all the way to the end of B Bog to make a double out of those balls on the east boundary. Should be, but he's sure screwed is. up this approach at one bat a bunch of times. Uh, Randy got it. Randy Reed. Can't hit it. Well, yeah. Make another try. Oh, this thing's over. Oh. Just for Peg. Too bad. Well, stranger things have happened. Is he going to bother to pick up green in corner four or just peg out with three balls? Yeah, that's tough. Not a lot of opportunities there in this game. If it works for you, if you're able to take me back after this, Michael's still at Sarasota, so you can just draw me up at Sarasota at the board. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we can look it up in range. Yeah. Once for a half hour. Okay. Yeah. That's no problem. Okay.
Well, he said, yeah, he only he started his last game at 4:30, and and his games will most likely go to time, and they're only an hour in. Yeah, and you have probably 15 minutes, 10 minutes. Uh, that should be done in a couple minutes. Yeah. Unless he stuffs a Hooper does something dumb, but it doesn't look likely. He's gonna start going with two hands. How much longer? Yeah. So he screws out. I don't think so. Not too bad. It seems. Not terrible. Oh, he's out of tight, he said. I gotta win all my games tomorrow, and you're one of them. No offense, I just have to win them. It will, it will help me out. Hey, like I said, you just keep missing those hit ins. Fuck you. I'm not gonna miss them tomorrow. I do that in tournament. I just have one game where I just can't hit in, and then the next game just lights out. Stuff the fucking new tree. You, you wanna stuff it when you know you want. He can't just roll both of these to the peg because Blake gets a lift and his brown ball is sitting up there on the bonk line. The peg one out. Which means I'm just going to have to guard him on the peg pretty much. Try and hit him. I'm in a pretty bad spot. The green clip is on two. So he's going to shoot it brown even though it's further away and then try to use pink to get something going. And Sheree prevails, 26-10 over Blake Fields. They both made it out of block. Blake lost in the first round of the knockout, and Sharif lost in the second round.
This is only the first of these generational battles I hope to get on video between these two. Sharif, already a giant in world and U.S. croquet, who goes into the Hall of Fame this winter, and Blake at 15 in October, joining the cadre of young players helping to keep American croquet exciting and vital.